Hiya, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Why am I saying it so many times? Because I'm trying to convince myself you actually are. So, I was wrong. These two chambers actually work rather well. This is the condensation chamber, and this is the evaporation chamber. And I'm going to fly above it so we can get a look at it. The exhaust from the evaporation chamber goes in to the condensation chamber, which then turns into a liquid. But we also flow it over this heat exchanger and the liquid from the condenser goes through this heat exchanger and into the evaporation chamber and that's all you really need you don't need these heat exchanger sides on these two units I don't know why they're there because you can just cool down the liquid in the pipes or the gas because on the compressor side the output gas is hot or the heat exchanger gas is hot and the liquid is hot and on the evaporator side, the output gas is cold, and the evaporated gas is also cold. And we just sink those out in either direction that we want. In this test chamber, I did have that side sealed. I think it is still sealed. So this side is sealed over here, this chamber here. So it's holding in the heat. It's not letting any heat out. The reason that the heat is so low is because I did an experiment where I put this room at zero and see and saw how fast it would go up. Right now, our cool room is at 9 degrees Celsius. The other accoutrement that I have attached here is not things that you necessarily need to have. This is a tank of nitrogen, and it's, a, it's injecting gas into our liquid pipes here. And the reason that you want to do that is because uh, the gas, the uh, liquid nitrous oxide that we're using will phase change uh, if the pressure is too low. So we want to keep this pressure up so that the gas will not evaporate. If it evaporates, then we're losing efficiency. So we want to keep it a, a liquid inside these pipes. And to do that, I've injected 33 moles of, uh, of nitrogen. That's inert. It's not going to change. It's not going to phase change. And it also doesn't enter either of the apparati. This is just in case there's, uh, this uh, purge pump is just there to, oh, and it's being injected by with a prescient pump. This purge pump is just to remove any excess nitrogen because we don't want the, we don't want the pipes to explode. Over here, this is what I use to inject the nitrous oxide into uh, our cooling loop. And there's no pumps or anything. I just stick the, uh, the canister on here and it gets sucked up and eventually uh, this unit compresses it down to uh, liquid. Now I didn't do any kind of specific measurements to see how much heat is transferred. It does seem to be fairly even, like the heat that you remove from this side actually gets put on to the other side. Uh, it doesn't, I didn't make any really time sensitive measurements. If I was make, taking like really in-depth measurements, I would have put a clock somewhere and I would have recorded it and I would have gone through the recording and marked down temperatures at certain uh, time spans. I don't, this is a game. You don't need to do that. Uh, but it does seem to be a little even. There seems to be a, maybe a little bit of waste heat being produced. So if you were to have this loop running in a single room, it would eventually warm up until it shut itself down. And that's, uh, that's an interesting part. Depending on what kind of fluid you use, you will have an operational range. So if we exceed 150 C and with our, our two megapascals, we will, no, we will no longer be able to have an effective cooling loop, an effective uh, heat pump, because it will never be able to condense down back into a liquid. And then if it's below um, 100 and, uh, if it's below 21 degrees Celsius, then you'll start having stuff solidify the pipes and then the pipes will burst. I haven't actually gotten anything to solidify in pipes yet, so I don't know what will occur if it'll bust the pipe open or what. It also should be noted that these charts and models in no way represent the reality of these gases. Phase changing occurs in a pseudo linear fashion. You don't automatically change from a gas to a liquid or a liquid to a solid at a very specific point. And all substances respond to vapor pressure. That is, they will vaporize, they'll begin to give off a vapor at specific pressures, and equalizing those pressures will stop them from phase changing. These sudden drop-offs do not occur in real life. In fact, if you were to heat something up at a very high pressure, 
it would turn into a superfluid. If you were to continue to heat it up and continue to increase the pressure, it would turn into a plasma. The other way around, you would start getting into experimental territory, real life experimental territory. Like for hydrogen, if you compress hydrogen down enough, you turn hydrogen into metallic hydrogen, which is this cool new space age substance that Star Trek thought of like 50 years ago. So again, what you will need is a prescient pump to be able to get this liquid loop to the proper pressure, a purge pump to suck any excess out because it's going to blow up if you don't have a, a way to relieve the pressure and don't use a vent because it's just going to spew stuff everywhere. You need two exchangers. You don't really need exchangers if you're just going to live in the gas that you're um, evaporating and condensing. You can just, you know, vent this out into the room, but closed loop is, is much better. So you have a heat exchanger. Those heat exchangers are terrible. They do not exchange heat very efficiently. I used to have a, a turbo pump here pushing uh, gas through this through this pipe to cool this to, to cool this exchanger down. I changed it to have all of those uh, vents in there, which is just more efficient than the turbo pump now. I don't know why they've changed the fluid dynamics of the game, and I haven't really looked into that. But this is the bottleneck: is cooling down the hot liquid and the hot exhaust gas. So. You're going to want to do everything possible to get that cooler. You don't need a lot of gas. We just have a few pipes here and I can make it, you can make these pipes uh, orientated in an even smaller configuration because that's going to be the expensive thing is the, uh, the gas. Liquid or um, nitrous oxide is not really difficult to find, but you will need quite a lot of it. I injected two of these large containers, or it might be three or four. Uh, just to get 120 liters into this pipe. You don't need that much liquid. As long as the pressure is up uh, above 2 megapascals, you will be fine. But the more liquid that you have, the more stable your loop is because you will have uh, more mass in there. But again, you don't need a whole lot. Now we could run this simulation until our temperature in our test chamber over here uh, raises up beyond 150 degrees and this whole system starts to fail. But the fact that we have 11 degrees in here and 42 degrees in the other room shows the power of the heat pump because you don't need to use the heat pump just to cool. You can use the heat pump to warm things up too. You can put this on Europa or whatever the cold planet is in this game and heat your base up with the heat pump. You just have to make sure that the fluid that you choose is the correct one and balance out your hot side and your cold side effectively. You'll probably want lower mass in your cold side because you're effectively stealing heat from the cold. So it's got to be above the freezing temperature of your fluid so to be able to steal some thermal energy from its surrounding. By the way, steal isn't the, the, the proper uh, word for it, but a lot of people use that word to describe how phase changes work. Uh, it takes energy to condense a liquid and then it releases energy to uh, evaporate a liquid if, if it's above the vapor point. We're not talking about like boiling and stuff. To me, this is an elegant and it's clunky, but you can't argue with results. We are using, uh, so we'll cut power to all of those fans and then take a look at how much energy we're using. And we're using 220 watts of electricity. There is no design that I can make that doesn't involve those two uh, chambers that is less than 220 watts. This is an elegant, I don't like it. And I don't like the look of these units. These units are, it, this is kind of dumb to me. Why don't they just make it look like an air conditioner or something? I don't know. Maybe because essentially air conditioners are just blocks. They look totally in place in um, Minecraft. This is my solution. I think it is much more elegant, but it is way more power hungry. If we take a look at how, how whoops, that's the wrong card. If we take a look at uh, how many watts we're gobbling up here, it's 1.27 kilowatts. That's a whole lot more than the condenser evaporator chamber combo, but it looks nicer. Look at how clean that looks. I also tried hard to make it look nice, 
So I'm kind of, you know, buttering my own bread here. The bottom numbers are for this room. And the top numbers are for that room over there, which is exposed to uh, uh, the greater environment. Here we have a bunch of pressurant pumps, prescient pumps, whatever the hell you want to call it, that is sucking out the gas in this line. So much gas that we're actually flirting with like a zero uh, kilopascal pressure. But it's giving a whole lot of evaporation. This liquid is uh, evaporating quite nicely. Now, it might be more efficient if I left some gas in this uh, line because I'm not sure how much thermal energy is exchanged between uh, the liquid in a gas pipe and an exchanger or you know with anything else that may not be as efficient I haven't really tested that out but it seems to be working for now we are running off of four pipes we also have our bypass here in case this um, tube gets too filled with liquid if you put these condenser valves down, you'll notice that it has a ghost image like this on the pipe, on the, uh, the valve, but when you put it down, it doesn't have that anymore. So you can't control it with an IC. If you could control it with an IC, all of this would be like much better. I also wish that these pumps were a little more efficient, but we're also sort of fighting upstream. Our gas line is pressurized much higher than our... Our, I mean, our our liquid line is pressurized much higher than our gas line over here, so it's kind of hard to measure that out. We could meter this off. What I would like is I would like a pump instead of like this injector thing, but or some sort of filter to keep the gas and the liquid separate. Um, generally speaking, if if this was a the uh, real world. You would make a standpipe to separate out the gases and liquids because liquids will fall towards uh, gravity and push the gas up to the top. And then you just put taps in the bottom and the top and be able to separate them out. I am not sure if you could do that in this game, um, if their systems even would recognize um, direction. Because if I built a standpipe like a kilometer up in the air, it would still be a uniform gas distribution from the top to the bottom, so it doesn't matter. On this side, right here, we have our regulator system, which regulates how much pressure is in the liquid line to make sure that we maintain uh, 4.5 megapascals. I just store, uh, chose 4.5 uh, megapascals arbitrarily. I could bring it down to 2 megapascals, and that actually might take some pressure off of these prescient pumps because they wouldn't be fighting uh, uphill so hard. But who cares? This is a game. To get liquid back into the system, we have this... Did I choose a pump or did I choose a regulator? Ah, I chose a regulator. So this regulator says that it's set to zero, but it's not actually set to zero. If we look at it, it is set to 0.4. Um, I didn't know that you could do this until now, but these, all of these settings on these, these equipment, you can fine tune to a very small amount and it'll still function. You can see the uh, float error here, how many decimal places you can go down to. I'm not gonna count them. I'm just going to, I'm just gonna guess, guess that that's uh, uh, negative 10 power because it seems like this uh, game is based on 10th power whatever. Then we have a whole bank of heat exchangers and that's because we're working with very little gas. That's why I think gas exchanges, uh, exchanges heat and the ex heat exchangers and liquid doesn't. Uh, although we could change this into a liquid line. It doesn't need to be a gas line. It could be a liquid line and then we just turn it into a gas line somewhere down here. Um, so that we can pull out all the um, we can pull out all the, all the gas because there is currently no way to selectively remove gas and liquids except for you know these pipes here. One solution would be to put a condenser valve and then an expansion valve immediately to separate out the gas and liquids and then sort of tap off the off the gas line, um, but. I didn't do that. That might be a better solution. But look how nice this looks. Doesn't this look nice? I think this looks much nicer than those great big tin cans. I mean, you can place them in a certain way that it looks, you know, a little bit nicer. But this looks elegant, I think. It uses, like, 
almost 10 times the power, but we're going to ignore that. It doesn't respond as quickly as the two-chamber solution, most because we're dealing with much more fluid in this instance. There is a lot more nitrous oxide in here. Now, you could use the nitrogen as a transport fluid for the thermal energy. That would be a little more complicated. Just stick with one gas and then one uh, inert gas to pressurize your system. We have a very limited range of gases that we can use. They also have very narrow windows of evaporation and condensation and uh, solidification, freezing, whatever you hell we want to call it. And then we have a planet of extremes like Venus, which is so hot, you need to daisy chain all that stuff up, which will not work well in this environment. The reason in the beginning that I had the test chamber closed off and I said that I set it to zero degrees. That's because I took a bunch of ice and I threw it in there and I think it took like uh, 30 nuggets of ice to get a five by five by two room down to zero degrees. And then it took it up to 40 degrees after I think 10 minutes or 20 minutes. And my cold room came up to I think minus two or minus three in that time or plus two or plus three in that time. So you don't need to have it exposed to the air. If you were on Venus, you could still, you could still control the temperature of your base by taking the um, off gas from your ore refining, putting it in a room uh, or a, a tank or whatever you want to put it into, and then just injecting as much heat into that as possible. Again, we're limited up to 150 uh, degrees Celsius. And then when it gets too hot, you could just vent it outside and then throw the stuff that you don't want to keep away. The possibilities to incorporate this system into your uh, currently functioning base or a future base that you want to, uh, to build is pretty much endless. And there are solutions that this will work on on every planet. It's just the ex how difficult it will be to implement. The good part about this setup here is I don't think there is any thermal leakage. I think with the, um, the compressor and the evaporator chambers, I do believe that they exchange some heat with the environment. I'm not 100% certain with that. These exchange no heat. All of these are basically passive machines. They're just all valves and they don't warm up and they don't cool down. And you should be able to have this kind of setup in a very sensitive uh, environment without boiling yourself alive, which is what I was doing on uh, my Venus playthrough is that I was uh, trying to implement my door control, which had a lot of um, waste heat coming off of it and I'd having to uh, burn off more and more and more or to keep my temperature down as soon as I rip them off and just use an, a normal uh, this you don't care about this story shut up Jay this fucking story's barag I like this solution use the solution that's best for you and uh, be totally prepared for everything to be changed in the future because teeny deeny likes to make tweaks in his game so we're under, we're all under constant fear that the next update will break everything we've done and we'll no longer have fun. And it'll turn out to be like seven days to die and become a completely different game after you purchased it. Okay, video's over, go away.